watching Gears. You know, one thing that's an important aspect of Gears is showcasing what's going on in the garages and shops all across the nation, and sometimes even helping out a little bit. Because for a lot of us, working on cars is not a hobby. It's a way of life. It's a living. And it's not always easy, especially when you're first getting started. So when we heard about a little shop in Arkansas that was doing good things but could use a helping hand, we decided to make a road trip. Oh, you're being nice? I don't know about that. Mondo Papera is the local Cornwall tool dealer in Rogers, Arkansas. And he supplies tools and equipment to various shops and mechanics. And when Mondo rolls in with his giant tool truck, the gearheads flock like kids to a candy store. They're family. Uh, they've been my customers for four years or five years now. So they're more family than they are my customers. Now, most of the places he visits are well-established businesses. However, there is one particular shop that hasn't been around very long, and it holds a special interest for Mondo. When he left the business, he thought he'd never be in the automotive business again. I mean, on the repair side of it. He was doing, uh, went into parts, and thought that's the way he would be the rest of his life. When he came back in the mechanical field, he was actually started with nothing, but he had the abilities. I mean, he could he can work on cars, and he had the ability to diagnose cars. Uh, and when I got my, my first toolbox for my birthday, it was pretty much all over. Yeah. Uh, there, yeah. there was nothing else I could think about doing. And though I've done a, uh, a few things, you know, I went to college and I got business management, and I, I, I thought about doing that, you know, wearing a suit and tie, and and I tried it for a little while, but man, you just when it's in your blood, it's in your blood. Oh, you yeah. just can't get away from it. Even though Jason had been working on cars for a long time, this was his first jump into owning his own business, and he wanted to do things a little differently. We do everything from installing light bulbs to rebuilding engines, uh, just pretty much everything we can get our hands on, uh, and, and, but mostly just what people need. Uh, the Battered Women's Shelter of Northwest Arkansas, we do all of their work um, for their clients and for the staff themselves. We do all the work for them for free. We don't charge them anything. Um, if they'll buy the parts, we do all the work. But sometimes doing things differently isn't always the most lucrative, especially if you don't have all the tools you need. To come in and offer a fair service at a fair price, that was the cornerstone of it. And I know that sounds really simple, but it's kind of hard to do sometimes uh, with the overhead. And that's been one of the things we've tried to do is to keep our overhead down. And so we haven't rented a lot of equipment. We haven't leased owned a bunch of equipment. Uh, we've been pretty much taking every cent of profit the business makes and reinvesting it in tools. Fortunately, that's something that we can help Jason with. So we hooked up with our buddies at Cornwell Tools and we put together a list of some equipment that Jason has got to have. The first and most important was a tire changer and a wheel balancer, so they can mount and balance tires in-house instead of sending them out to someone else. The tire changing machines and, and the AC recovery machine was two areas that we were really lacking in, especially this time of year. So, I mean, it is amazing to get those things because uh, it's going to provide us an opportunity to, to help the community and, and help support our company, too. Uh, by being able to branch out and have a little bit more diversity. That's it's awesome. gonna be amazing. The next was an auto database and smoke machine to diagnose and service late model vehicles and help bring the auto stop one step closer to being a full service repair shop. It was, it was uh, very pleasant that, that, uh, that you responded to me and we were able to help him. And I think it's a big help to him. I think that's a next step for it, next step in the evolution of his business. Can't thank you guys enough, man. That's pretty much it. You know, when you see somebody like Jason with a strong work ethic and the desire to help other people out, then it's worth investing in somebody like that. That's what car guys have always done because we understand that the more success a guy like that has, the more success this whole industry has. It's far more satisfying than it is lucrative. <laughs> yeah, and, and that's, uh, that's the payment.
You know, a few years ago, I started a project called Sergeant Rock, which was based on a 1941 Dodge Power Wagon that I found sitting in a field in Idaho. Now, it was rough, but it made the perfect platform for how-to segments on fabrication and restoration work. Thanks a lot. And over the years, the truck transformed into a rolling monster, loaded with a ton of unique features that were designed to pay tribute to our World War II veterans, as well as all men and women that have ever served in the US military. But as the truck slowly neared completion, there were still some parts missing from the build, parts that I just couldn't find in the aftermarket, parts that were gonna require a trip to France. As we traveled into France, we ended up in the small town of Caen, which is just a few miles from some of the most beautiful beaches in Europe. Today, the biggest struggle in Caen is trying to understand the tourists that flood the town to see the museums and the memorials. Uh, the second one is a double express. So the number four is a but 70 years ago, the struggle wasn't how to order the right croissant. It was for survival itself, as the Nazi war machine tore through Khan, leaving death and destruction in its wake. But Khan is just part of the story. Remember those beautiful beaches? Well, today they bear names like Utah and Juneau and Omaha. They're the beaches of Normandy where American and Allied soldiers came ashore on D-Day to try to stop the German advance to England. And the fighting on those beaches was fierce and brutal. With the threat of the coming Allied invasion, the Nazis prepared by building bunkers and fortifications along the beaches to prevent a water landing. Even today, you still see evidence of this scattered among the farmland, the joggers, and the bicyclists. And when you see the size of the guns and the engineering that went into the batteries and the networks of tunnels, it's very obvious that the Germans planned on being here for a long, long time. 
Especially bad was Omaha Beach. With machine guns set up in a crossfire covering the beach and obstacles in the water, soldiers were lucky just to make it to dry land. And if you did that, you had the hills or cliffs to climb as the enemy rained down bullets and grenades on you. The casualties were so great that the water was red with blood for days after the landing. Here on Omaha Beach was the whole reason we were invited to France. To pick up the final pieces to the Sergeant Rock project. Seven smooth stones from the water's edge. One for each decade since D-Day to incorporate into the buildup. The sobering part is that the beach remains largely undeveloped. So there's no question that these silent stones were witness to what happened here 70 years ago and possibly even supplied some support under the back of a wounded or dying soldier. The thought of that will definitely make you stop and try to imagine what these stones would say if they could talk. These seven stones, along with some original rivets from the Memphis Bell, will be added to the interior of the truck to make sure that what happened on the beaches of Normandy and over the skies of Europe will be remembered whenever people see the truck. And to help a lot of people see the truck, we hooked up with the guys at Acme Diecast who are well known for their high-end 118th scale diecast models, and Greenlight, who is also well known for their high-end 164th scale models, and they put together an incredibly detailed 164th diecast of the Sergeant Rock truck. From the custom bumpers, the bed, the exhaust stacks, to the huge tires, the military axles, and the 50 caliber machine guns, this thing is incredibly accurate. It even has the Memphis Bell nose art and the Arlington Memorial on the tailgate. Which means anybody can get a miniature version of the Sergeant Rock truck right off our website a heck of a lot quicker than it took me to build the real one, but not by much, because the next time you see the big rock, it's gonna be rolling down the road. You know, one of the greatest things to come along for the do-it-yourself car builder was the crate engine. All of a sudden, it was possible to buy the engine that you wanted in a crate, and it even came with a warranty. Of course, when you add to that all of the other parts that are available in the aftermarket, like air conditioning and suspension and wheels and tires, well, all of a sudden, it became very easy to build a car in your own garage. There was only one problem. Most crate engines came with a carburetor. And if you wanted fuel injection, that could be an expensive, frustrating thing to do. Until Holly came out with the Terminator EFI and said they had fuel injection for the masses. But just how easy is that to put in? That's what we're gonna take a look at. The Terminator system consists of a throttle body. As you can see, it's designed to bolt right in place of a four barrel carburetor. Then you've got four injectors already installed. You've got the fuel rail all in place. You've got all the plug-ins and sensors where they need to be, so you basically just bolt this on. Now, this is controlled by an ECU. Then, of course, you've got all the harnesses and all the hardware to make this thing work. Now, the cool thing about this system is that it's self-learning, so you don't have to be dinking around with a laptop to make this run. This does it for you. Basically, all you need to do is install it. Here's how to do it. Okay. The first step is to remove the carburetor. Now, if you'll notice, the new throttle body has all the vacuum ports that you're gonna need, but most crate engines, check this out, don't come with the vacuum ports. They're just plugged. So you'll need to make a trip to your local auto parts store and pick up the fitting that you need. Also, since crate engines don't come with throttle cables or throttle brackets, it's a good idea to contact the guys at Low Car pick up some new cables and brackets. That way you got some nice new stuff to work with. All right, once you have everything laid out, now you can bolt it on. Now, the Terminator EFI utilizes a coolant temperature sensor that goes right here in the intake manifold and an O2 sensor that mounts down on the exhaust system. Now, if your headers don't have a bung for the O2 sensor, 
you're going to have to weld one in. Now, it comes with the kit, and you can either mount it here before the collector or right here after the collector when you're laying out your exhaust system. Okay, mounting the ECU is next, and this is very simple. It just takes four bolts. Now, you can mount this in the engine compartment or you can mount it in the passenger compartment. You just want to keep it away from high heat, make sure it's easily accessible. Now, once that is mounted, you'll use the wiring harnesses to connect the ECU to the throttle body and the sensors. Now, I know that might sound a little difficult, but take a look at this. Notice that all of these fittings, all of these ends are well marked and they only go one place. You really can't mess this up. Now, another thing that you will need if you're converting from a carburetor to fuel injection is a different fuel delivery system because that fuel injection takes 45 PSI of fuel. A carburetor only takes seven. Fortunately, Holly has got a kit to work right with the Terminator. Take a look at this. You can see you've got an electric fuel pump, a couple of different filters, a regulator, you've got fittings, you've got hose. Everything is designed to make putting that injection in as painless as possible. And that is pretty much it when it comes to putting Holly's fuel injection on an engine. You basically bolt it on and plug and play. Then, once you fire it up, you just take the handheld controller and dial in the engine. And that allows the Terminator to do the rest. to you by E3 Spark Plugs, born to burn. One of the hottest engines to come down the road in a long time is the GM LS. But as powerful as it is, it does have one major problem in stock form. The ugly coil packs on the valve covers. Fortunately, it is possible to clean up those LS engines and make them look as good as they run. First, you gotta get rid of those stock coils put on something with some fire, like these MSD blasters. Now those are gonna make a difference. Now to mount those coils, Clayton Machine Works has a coil relocation kit that consists of aluminum brackets that allow you to double up the coils and mount them down in front of the engine, back on the firewall, pretty much wherever you wanna put them. Now to connect those coils back to your wiring harness, Painless Performance has some extension harnesses in various different lengths that will allow you to hook to those coils no matter where you put them. Now, to connect the coils back to your spark plugs, MSD has some universal kits to help you do that. So, now you can have a retro looking LS engine in a vintage muscle car. If you'd like to learn more tips to make your life easier in the shop, check out the tips page on the website. Tool Tech, brought to you by Cornwell Tools, the choice of professionals. You know, most people think that guys don't have a clue when it comes to fashion. That's because most guys don't care about fashion. But cars and tools, oh, we can match those up. And that's why if you spend any time in a shop, you know that most guys like to match up their tools and their toolboxes so everything looks good. But one tool that's always been a little removed from that has been the floor jack. Because they were pretty much available in red whether you liked it or not. Well, Cornwell Tools decided that that had to change. So they now offer their professional grade floor jacks in the same powder coated colors that you can get the toolboxes in. But before you think that these are just some cheap jacks made to look good, look closer. These are the same heavy duty three and a half ton floor jacks that you can beat on for years and never have to replace. Except now, they're gonna look good for all those years. You know a good floor jack is something that every shop needs. And if you gotta have one, you might as well have one in the color you like. And now, what are you working on? Brought to you by Napa. Engineered to make a living, designed to make a statement. Perfect Editions Napa. Today's What Are You Working On comes from Brendan Weeks from the Boston area, 
And he's a firefighter, and he says he's built a lot of Jeeps over the years. But he's always wanted an early Bronco. And he says, fortunately, he found one 20 minutes from his house. And he says the good news was that it was original, had low miles. The bad news, it was pretty much rusted into the ground. But he said that didn't matter. So the first thing he did is he got out a cutoff wheel and started cutting and kept cutting until it wasn't much left. Then he grabbed the welder and some new sheet metal and started rebuilding and didn't stop until the old Bronc had a new rust-free body again. Now, at this point, the engine is apart being rebuilt, and Brendan says that he's working on the frame and the suspension, and he hopes to have the Bronco rolling down the road sometime this fall, which is the perfect time to be enjoying a Bronco. So, Brendan, great project. You know that I love those early Broncos. And to recognize all the work you've done on yours, we hooked up with our buddies at Napa Auto Parts, and they're gonna give you a perfect additions toolbox, either for a vehicle or the shop, all you got to do is tell them what you want and they'll ship it to you. Also, we're going to give you one of our project planning books so you can document everything that you're doing and planning to do to that rig. Then we're going to give you one of our Sergeant Rock t-shirts and one of our new little Sergeant Rock die casts. These are hot off the press and not only are they really cool, but part of the proceeds of every one of these that we sell goes to the Intrepid Fallen Heroes Foundation. Now, if you're not familiar with them, you need to check them out because they do a lot of great things for wounded soldiers and their families. Now, for the rest of you guys, if you want to get in on this, get your vehicle featured on the show, you got to go on the website, submit your profile into Gears Nation. We pull all of the what are you working ons, all of the on the road segments right off of Gears Nation. Also, don't forget to check us out on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, all that social media, because we've always got cool stuff going on there too. All right, it takes care of it today. It is time for you to get out there and start working on something. So, we'll see you next time.